welcome back to my channel i am lovely simon and today i am going to be teaching on praying and fasting um before i begin to get into this message that the lord has laid on my heart to release to the people to the body of christ um, i'm going to start with the scripture and the scripture that god gave me was matthew 4 and 4 it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, in this context, this is when the devil tempted Jesus. And Jesus was basically telling the devil, you can't tempt me, tempt me with bread. You can't tempt me with food. It is written, my father, my heavenly father says that it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is so powerful. In this next season, we are going to have to learn how to train our bodies, how not to consume so much food. My God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Help me. And before I begin to get into this message as well, because as I want to dive so deep into it, I am going to begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that whoever this video is meant for, Lord God, it comes across their page god it is in their algorithm father god that they begin to see how they need to pray and fast to seek you in this next season god in this winter season that is approaching father god in the mighty name of jesus lord i ask that you give them divine strategy you give them revelation father god on what it is that they may need to do things in their lives that they need to cut out father god so that they can hear you father god in the mighty name of jesus and lord god as i begin to end this prayer lord god i seal it with the blood of jesus in jesus name i pray amen so we thank, we give thanks to the most high glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason why I feel the Lord has put this on my heart is because, and I'm going to be releasing more videos. I have not because the Lord has really had me in a, a place to where he has been doing a lot of downloads, but now it's time for me to release what the Lord has put on my heart to give to the people. Amen. So I'm in this next season, we are going to have to learn how to back away from the table. It is very important for us to begin to seek the Father. Seek Him like never before. Because that is the only way we are going to survive. Amen? So, praying and fasting... There are many benefits to praying and fasting. There are many times where we want to begin to pray and fast due to, you know, we may deal with lust fornication pornography masturbation um excuse my background my uh the guy is cutting my grass right now um and i can do a whole message even on cutting the grass for god to reveal the snakes to you so i believe that god wants to i don't believe i know that god wants to prepare his people so that they can be ready it's not important for us to stay ready but to be ready to always be ready at any point in time picture this you go to your grocery stores there's nothing on the shelves or you go to your grocery stores and they tell you they, they employ they deploy martial law and they tell you you can only pick three items in the store your limit is three items you can't go in there and buy up everything that you want so you have to think of what are the what are the most important things that I want to buy. But before we even get to that point, everyone is saying a famine, a famine, a famine is coming. The famine is already here. The food shortage is already here. Just go to Walmart, go to Target, go to all these different stores and you will begin to see there is nothing on the shelves, especially in Walmart. The stores that everybody go to. There's nothing on the shelves. So it's time for us to take warning, take heed to the warnings of the Lord and try and listen to what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and get into praying and fasting. What is spiritual fasting? Spiritual fasting is to deny our bodies its physical needs, usually food. Your focus, and it helps you to focus from the physical to the spiritual. It allows you to have more faith. It allows you to hear God's voice. It allows you to humble yourself. It allows you to remove the pride and the malice in your heart. It allows you, it allows God to remove that heart of stone to a heart of flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So for an example, Moses fasted for 40 days and experienced the finger of God writing down the Ten Commandments. If you want to go and study that out for yourself, if that is Exodus 34, 28. Another example, Jesus fasted for 40 days and started a ministry that would, forget, that would forgive the world's sins and reconcile all earth back to God. And that also is 1 Peter 3.18 and Colossians 1.20, if you would like to go and study that for yourselves. Fasting for spiritual, it also allows you to fast for spiritual growth because it helps you to grow closer to God. And it's often a regular part of prayer life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need to begin to make this a part of our day-to-day -day life. This is not something that we need to do once a year. This is something that needs to be implicated in our lives so it becomes the new normal for us, right? So we don't have to try to press our way through to get in God's presence. Amen? So we don't have to press our way through to get a breakthrough. We don't have to press our way through to get God to hear what we are saying when we approach the throne. It is already a part of us and we know how to get straight to it. Amen? All throughout history, there were seasons of feast and famine. The body and the soul naturally went through times of hard work and lack of times of ease and abundance. So you know what that means, people of God. Our bodies were not only created. God did not only create our bodies, not only for feasting and seasons for abundance. There, it's also created for seasons of fasting to basically pull back from the table so that our spirit can arise within us. The Holy Spirit can arise within us so that we can feed the Holy Spirit that is within us. And the only way that you can have the Holy Spirit if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Amen. However, today in Western culture, we have every day. We have every day, all 365 days of abundance, meaning you can go to the grocery store, you can go to the restaurant, you can pull up at a fast food joint. You have food readily available for you, but what's going to happen? What's going to happen to your mind? What's going to happen to your lifestyle when you can't go and you don't have access to these things? <sighs> And again, this is not a this is not a fear message. This is to prepare you for what is to come. Amen. Our diet is not dependent on the weather or season or location. We're spoiled. We haven't had to deal with any of these things. We just eat, 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 eat. Want, want, want. We whatever we want, we we get in our cars and we drive to whatever it is our hearts desires. We have the ability to eat what we want when we want. We have to fast. Oh, I'm sorry. We can go to fast food, Chinese, Mexican restaurants, or sports bar, a sports bar, Italian, etc. Again, we have that ability to go wherever we want to go. We have that convenience, right? We have the convenience to go to these places and not lack or have any boundaries put around us to where we have to pick and choose healthy food versus going to eat healthy food. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. But with having so much access to food comes a greater need for self-control. We must decide on the kinds and amounts of food that are appropriate for a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. Amen. What are benefits of fasting? Even with a healthy lifestyle for eating, we must, we most likely won't experience a famine. Our bodies were designed to experience both, again, here it goes again, both a feast and a famine. We feast to celebrate and we fast to transform. That is so powerful. We feast to celebrate and we fast to transform. I can go so deep into that. We fast to transform. What does that mean? What does that mean for us to transform? The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
Be ye transformed. So the, the mindset of the world that you have, Jesus wants to come into your heart and he wants to transform you on that. That mindset that tells you that you can eat whatever you want to eat and just have that spirit of gluttony over you. Gluttony leads to sin. Gluttony is a sin because gluttony allows you not to have self-control. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In this season, we must have self-control. Again, so what are fasting? What are the benefits of fasting? Spiritual fasting causes us to rely on God. When you begin to fast, you t you're telling God, God, I'm putting everything on the table. Anything that I've ever thought, God, I'm even putting my own will on the table. And I'm going to rely on you for every single thing, for my mind, for me to be right in my right mind, Lord God. I'm relying on you to show me how to uh, nurture my children, how to work my job, how to walk in my purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How to walk in what you've called me to be in the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We will have to rely on God. It allows us to be trained in the spirit, which we're supposed to rely on God anyway. We're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. We are supposed to always rely on God because he's our heavenly father and we are his children. So we must remove the pride and the malice out of our hearts. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Most people have this notion of thinking that I need to get myself together before I come to Jesus Christ. No, God wants to be able to, he wants you to come to him while you're in your mess. You're basically saying, I need to get myself perfect before I go to God, before I present myself to God. Newsflash, you're never going to be perfect. That's why you need to go to God. Okay, amen. I want to remove that seed that has been put in your head or the enemy has condemned you and told you that you were not worthy of God's love. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are worthy of his love. He made you. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knew exactly what you would become. He knew exactly what things that you would do. He knew you would become the prodigal son or daughter. Who am I talking to in the mighty name of Jesus? So it's nothing that you can do that God doesn't know about. He knew you were going to be in that pit with the pigs, like the prodigal son, before you even knew you, before you even, before the thought even came to your mind. So we have to go to God and we have to rely on him as little children. Jesus said, the children, you must come to me like little children. Let the little children come. Amen. So food is one of the basic needs of, of life. Physical hunger is not a pleasant experience. It can actually be difficult a difficult trial to endure but god's grace rises in our lives during hard times again we are about to be in some hard times but if you rely on god you will receive you will receive you will experience the peace that surpasses all understanding let's see when you begin okay i'm gonna go into that when i speak about um how do you fast the steps of how do you uh you go into prayer and fasting so i'm gonna digress on that one i'm gonna move on but god's grace rises up in our lives during hard times when we fast it forces us to seek god and lean into him for help and comfort god meets us powerfully during times we are desperate we are desperate for him fasting shows god that our hunger for him surpass our hunger for anything else again that's humbling ourselves that's letting god know that we surrender everything to you god and i want what you have for me I want your will for my life. Even though you have given me free will, Father God, I want your will for my life in the mighty name of Jesus. And you can look for that in Psalms 63 and 1 and Matthew, Matthew 6, 33. Spiritual fasting helps us be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. When we fast we can become irritable and negative because our flesh is not happy my god however god calls us to bear the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 22 
through 26. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When you fast, spiritual fasting helps you be filled with the fruits of the spirit. I'm going to say it again. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's not going to feel good when you begin to fast. Your body is going to want that McDonald's, that Wendy's, that Chick-fil-A. That restaurant that you like to go to. That seafood place that you like to go to. Juicy Crab was one of my favorite ones. Thank God I've been delivered from a lot of things that I used to overly indulge in. See, another thing about gluttony is when you don't have self-control, pride comes in and nobody can tell you anything. How will you be able to receive the word of the Lord or what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you if you don't have self-control? We got to humble ourselves. We got to get in that secret place of God and allow Jesus to transform our minds. Amen. Spiritual fasting open our hearts to hearing God's voice. Now, a lot of people don't know that when you, you start experiencing this deep revelation in God, when you begin to fast and pray. When you begin to fast and pray, it turns the volume of God's voice up. It turns the volume of God's voice up. And when it begins to turn the volume of God's voice up, you begin to get divine intervention, divine revelation from the Holy Spirit. You begin to get divine direction. God begin to order each and every last, every last one of your steps. It's no longer you knowing what's best for your life anymore at this point. It is God leading you into spirit, into all truth. Amen. When we fast, there is almost nothing. There's almost nothing distracting us from hearing God's voice. I'm going to stop right there. When you begin to fast and pray and you surrender and you present yourself to Jesus, to God as a living sacrifice, you know what you are doing? You are allowing God to shut the mouth of the enemy. All those other voices that you heard in your head, it shuts them down to where you can only hear God's voice. We have emptied ourselves of our most basic need so we can put our, folk, our full attention on God. This is the best time to make those difficult choices in life. Meaning, if God is telling you to get rid of idols in your home, if God is telling you to get rid of people in your life that is toxic, you no longer struggle it becomes easy when you hearken to the voice of the Lord and you know that it is God is speaking, speaking to you and you are quickened in your spirit and you do it immediately. You don't argue. You do it. You may have some questions about it, but God will reassure you that obedience is better than sacrifice. I know that was one of my the biggest scriptures that God always wrote in my heart and my spirit. Anytime I fasted and prayed and I didn't want to do something that God told me to do, he would always say, obedience is better than sacrifice. You've been sacrificing my daughter. You've been sacrificing my son. I have so much better for you. And we don't realize that it is sin that separates us away from God. It's not that God ever leaves us. It is the sin that is put in between the relationship between us and God. So God may be speaking to you, but the sin is so loud in your life. The strongholds is so loud in your life that you cannot hear what your heavenly father is saying. It's, it goes from a whisper to it's mute. And no matter how much God sent a messenger to you for you to be able to receive, you will not receive it. It will fall on deaf ears. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we are at a crossroads and don't know which way to turn, fasting helps us to hear God's direction. As we walk in the spirit, we don't be hung, we won't 
be hung up by the desires of our flesh trying to hold us down and keep us off course. Your flesh, your flesh keeps you in bondage. People of God, body of Christ, we don't know these things because God says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth. Your flesh has been telling you what to do for so long that you don't know what it feels like to die to it. Paul said we are to die to our flesh daily. Daily. This is a daily battle. Bringing every thought into every thought, every imagination that above, I'm sorry, every bringing every thought captive bringing every thought into captivity give it to me holy spirit that exalt itself above the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity i'm sorry i want to say it because i haven't seen it in a long time casting down every imagination thank you holy spirit casting down every imagination that exalted itself above the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity see i need to rely on god i couldn't get that scripture i couldn't get it on my own but the holy spirit will bring that thing back up in you thank you god bring it into captivity into jesus christ in the name of jesus thank you lord We will be able to hear more clearly from God when our spirit is stronger than our flesh. Galatians 5, 16. And I just want to pull that scripture up. We have to rely on God. We cannot do this on our own. I could read the whole Bible and try to remember it with my carnal mind, but I can't do it. But when I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit is going to bring that thing back up in me. He can do that in anybody, not just me. He can do it in anybody, but you have to seek ye first. The kingdom and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Galatians 5, 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for your spirit, God. Why do I always have this problem? Okay. Thank you, God. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye would be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sed sed seditions. I got to look that one up. Heresies, envy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law and they that are christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not be the serious of vain glory provoking one another envying one another so we must die to our flesh 
I'm going to read that one again. Galatians uh, 525. If we walk in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not the serious of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. We must crucify this flesh in order to receive the fruits of the spirit, in order to be self-controlled, in order to hear the voice of the Lord, what he is saying to you. Amen. Spiritual fasting renews our appreciation for God and his blessings. Oh, yes. Because sometimes when we're so deep into our flesh, we don't stop to see all the things that God has blessed us with. We don't stop to think, God, I thank you for allowing me to wake up another day and that I am breathing today. Amen. It allows us to become aware of the goodness of the Lord. We tend to forget how blessed we are. What once used to satisfy us now isn't enough. Because you're feeding your flesh so much. The, the Bible says that the flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. So you can keep feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. Feeding it. You're never going to find peace. But when you operate in the Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. When you operate and you partner with God. God begins to give you that peace that surpasses all understanding to where you're grateful even if you just have a roof over your head and no, no money in the bank. It allows you to be appreciative. That's part of being humble and meek. Thank you, Holy Spirit. More food, more clothes, more television, more trips. Whatever it is, we can forget. Whatever it is, we can forget how much God has given us. And our unquenchable, unquenchable. Remember, the flesh is never satisfied. It's like being thirsty, but never quenching your thirst. <laughs> but Jesus is the only well that never runs dry in the mighty name of Jesus. Our unquenchable desires become stronger than our love for God. We got to humble ourselves, people of God. When we take God's blessings for granted, we take him for granted. But God wants our hearts to be turned towards him. That's what it means to repent. Turn from your wicked ways. I'm going to be doing a video soon on repenting, coming into true. What is true repentance? He wants us to appreciate all that he has done in our lives. If you don't appreciate God, then you won't go to him. You won't rely on him. You'll think everything that you're getting is because you did it. You'll praise the works in your life that you feel like you have done, not knowing that God is giving you the strength to be able to do it and to handle it and to sustain it. But the Lord giveth and the Lord will take away. Spiritual fasting also gives power to our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said there are some breakthroughs that are only gotten through by prayer and fasting. If we have been facing the same unanswered prayer for a long time, it may be time to fast. Let me break that down for you, people of God. If, if you are dealing with lust, if you are dealing with generational curses, if you are dealing with homosexuality, if you are dealing with rape, molestation, if you are dealing with depression, anxiety, rejection, abandonment, if you are continuously in a cycle on a hamster wheel and nothing is working and you're praying and nothing is working, it is time for you to fast. Because when you, thank you, Holy Spirit, when you begin to die to that flesh daily, when you begin to stop feeding that demon that is in you that wants you to keep being and having everything because the flesh is never satisfied. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will begin to break some chains off of you in the spiritual realm. The power of the Holy Spirit will begin to manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. 
Not only does fasting turns the volume of God's voice up, it breaks the chains in the spiritual realm. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, how were you able to cast the demon out of him? He says, some things come by, some breakthroughs come by fasting and praying. You can't get it no other way. Because there is a principle that God has that holds so much power in the spiritual realm. Yes, prayer is a transaction in the spiritual realm. But there are some things that you got to do to allow God to be able to move on your behalf. And that is sustaining from eating. That is sustaining from doing certain things. Giving the body lust. Feeding the lust so much that you're, you're weak. How can the spirit of God work in you and work on your behalf if you keep feeding the flesh? It's time for us to bring this, the, 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 the flesh into subjection of the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The prayer, the prayer that is powered by both faith and fasting can be the very thing that unleashes God's promise in your life. Demons don't like when we fast. Because they know we tap into in the realm of the spirit in the kingdom of God. That is a tool. That is a weapon. That is a weapon in God's arsenal for you to use. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. So we must fast and we must pray. Amen. There are some spirits like the spirit of lack and the spirit of chaos waging war on our promises. And we have to fast for added power to defeat them. Mark 9, if you want to go and research that and not research, if you want to go study it for yourselves. Don't take my word for it. Me coming to you is just bringing this so that you can go and be provoked to seek and search God out for yourselves. I'm just the messenger. Amen. And that is Mark 9, 28 through 29. Number seven, spiritual fasting creates an environmental, I'm sorry, an environment for miracles fasting forces the flesh to go under the authority of god's spirit in us when we are effectively fasting we are letting god have all the room his spirit becomes powerful and mighty in our words and action the Bible says that life and death lies in the power of our own tongue. Do you know how powerful it is? The move of God is in the spiritual realm when you begin to fast. It's instant power. We've been operating backwards for so long. It is time for us to operate in our inheritance. This is part of our inheritance. To operate in the spirit and to have real true power. Amen. This is the perfect atmosphere for heaven to touch the earth and transform our circumstances of lack, chaos, and fear into God's ordained circumstances of supply, peace, and faith. Glory be to God. However, we must endure that our fast is done for heavenly rewards, not earthly rewards. Now, that's not to say that God will not give us earthly rewards, because let me explain this to you. As it is in earth, as it is in heaven, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, because we are not from earth, we are, thank you, Holy Spirit. We are heavenly beings. Amen. We operate in the spiritual realm. So whatever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Whatever heavenly rewards that we receive, even while we're on earth, is going to manifest in the natural. Then it becomes a earthly reward. We're not looking for earthly rewards. 
We want the spiritual rewards to manifest in the natural. You can have heaven on our earth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The desires of your heart, when you begin to partner with God, those are the things that indicate what's already in heaven that's yours. All we need to do is get in the position to pull it down from the spiritual realm. God is waiting on us. Angels are waiting on us to give them something to do. Glory be to God. That is our inheritance. Thank you, Jesus. God blesses us when we keep our fast secret unless our testimony of fasting is used to edify others. So when you go on a fast, I don't know what book that was, sorry. So when we go on a fast, we are not to tell others that we're on a fast unless it is to edify others. When we go on a fast, we go in a secret place with God. Now, you don't have to put on sackcloth and cover your head. But you need to go in the secret place. He who hides in the... Sh I'm sorry. Give it to me, Holy Spirit. I have to rely on you. He who hides in the secret place of the most high God shall abide in the shadow of the almighty. We must get in the secret place with God to break things in the spiritual realm, to break the chains, to break the bondage that the enemy has put on us, to, to break the three cords. The same way the enemy put three cords on Samson, the enemy has three cords on a lot of us in the spiritual realm, but we can't see it. We are fighting an enemy that we can't see. We're fighting our husbands. We're fighting our wives. We're fighting our children. We're, we're fighting our, our co-workers. We're fighting our, uh, our pastors. We're fighting our family members, but the... The fight is not with them. The fight is with the principalities and the dark rulers in high places. So when you begin to get into that secret place with God, when you begin to fast and humble yourself in the mighty name of Jesus, God will begin to show you what is going on in the spiritual realm so that you can pray effectively. Thank you, Jesus. God blesses us when we keep our fast secret unless our testimony is of fasting is used to edify others. Matthew 6, 16 through 18, if you want to go reference that. And I'm wrapping up soon here. Spiritual fasting helps us to consume God's word. <clears throat> that word consume refers to eating, digesting. Allowing God's word to manifest in us. When you're not eating and consuming food, you are munching on the word of God. That's why you're not hungry. If you ever experience going on a fast and you indulge into the word of God, you will not think about food. You won't. It's a mind thing. It's a state of mind of being hungry. If you tell yourself you're hungry, you're going to be hungry. If you tell yourself that you need to fast and you need to stay in God's word. The word will feed you. Man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word of God is the word that is proceeding out of the mouth of God. It's feeding you. It's feeding your spirit so that your flesh can die. We are spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings living inside of this clay. So there are certain things that we have to operate in in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. We are both flesh and spirit. Many times we keep our flesh well fed as our spirits waste away. No, it's time for our spirit to rise and be mighty in God. It is up to you to humble yourselves and use your free will to go to God so that your spirit can be fed and it can rise. And then at that point, then you can now walk in identity. Thank you, Lord. 
What in the world? I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> These bugs. Then at that point, you can inherit the kingdom of God. Then at that point, you can walk in the spirit. Then at that point, you can experience and have and obtain the spirits, the fruits of the spirit. Amen. When we fast food, we fat when we fast from food, our body, I'm sorry, when we fast food from our bodies, we open the way for our spirit to consume God's word like never before. Some people, when they feed their flesh so much, the first thing they say is, I don't understand the word of God. It's boring. I can't, I can't receive what it's saying. Well, if you die to your flesh, God will begin to give you revelation. It's too much filth in your flesh, in this vessel. That is separating you from the word of God. It's falling on deaf ears. Amen. There are some strongholds that needs to be addressed. Our starved spirit feast on God's word, supplying itself with much needed substance and nutrition, nutrition, nut I'm sorry, nutrients. Help me, Lord. It desperately needs. The word of God is spiritual nutrients. Where is these flies coming from? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, Satan. This whole time I've been out here, no flies have been bothered. There's no food. There's nothing around. There should not be any flies. Oh, there's an eagle. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm like, so I love eagles. God says that eagles fly alone. Oh, my goodness. And I see them in my backyard all the time. I digress. Let me get back on topic. Um, My last point. Whenever we take something out of our lives, we must fill it with something else. When we take food, we fill it, we fill it with the Bible. I'm sorry. When we take out food, we fill it with the Bible, meaning the word of God. As we read the Bible, the reigning spirit of God within us will teach, grow, and transform us and the, and the world around us. That means your eyes will be open like never before. The carnal mind that you used to have, God, Jesus says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You will begin to experience what that feels like for your mind to be renewed. Thank you, Jesus. So I hope and pray that this message has touched you, that it has given you revelation. Um, before I end this video, I am going to give the basics of how to actually go into fasting, right? So number one. The first thing that God is going to have us to do is to remove idols, to remove uh, if you smoke, if you drink, anything that is separating, whatever sin that keeps you going back. He's going to have you to get rid of people in your life that is keeping you in bondage. Also, people that are keeping you stagnant in your life to where you cannot go forward. If it's baby daddies, if it's baby mama, if it's side pieces, whatever it is, God is going to have you cut them off. God said he's going to show you how to cut the head of the serpent. He's going to show you how to do it. Once you remove and you do that spiritual cleansing and get everything out of your house. And what you're going to do is you're going to ask the Holy Spirit, please reveal to me every single thing that is in my house that is not of you. Reveal to me every single thing that is in my life that I have brought into my life to bring a curse among up, upon myself. And the Holy Spirit will begin to show you and reveal to you over time. It may be shoes. It may be clothes. It may be jewelry. It may be watches. It may be purses. It may be statues whatever it is get rid of it that's number one because you don't want anything that's tying you to those curses on your life you don't want anything that is tying you to anything that is going to keep you falling and stumbling back into sin god understands that his people perish for a lack of knowledge so now it's time to get knowledge so that we can be set free amen all right the second thing is choose the time frame of when you are going to fast. In this case, we are going to fast from food. Now, there are other cases where you can 
fast from video games, fast from social media. That's a big one. Fast from talking on the phone with people all the time. Sometimes you can't hear God even when you're fasting because it's too many voices. It's too many distractions. Get rid of the distractions. Amen. Um, so for an example, a lot of people say, I don't know how to fast. I don't know how to start. What you need to do is for an example, say from the time I wake up to 12 o'clock, I'm not going to eat any food. Now you can go cold people like me. I can go cold Turkey because I've been in a season to where I've trained. I've trained for 90 days. I've trained for six months. I've trained for a whole year. I've trained for a year and a half. So my when God say, I hear the word fast, I know, all right, it's time for me to fast. I can't touch no food. I need to be in my word. And I need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is speaking to me. Amen. So when it comes to the time frame, let's just baby step you. I'm not going to eat anything till 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock noon which is normally lunchtime for a lot of people. During that time that you are not consuming food, and I understand that people have jobs, what you need to be doing is consuming the word of God, having communion with God, meaning having a relationship, speaking to him, seeking him, humbling yourself, asking the Lord, what is it that needs to be taken out of your life? Ask him what needs to be brought to your awareness. Amen. What sins you need to pray against? What do you need to renounce? And that part, that is when you ask, that's when you're seeking the Lord. After that, you can eat. Now, let's just say you do that for three days and it becomes too easy for you. Well, you need to bump that 12 o'clock up to three o'clock at this point. Bump it up to three o'clock. It's just like when you go to the gym. I could start out at the gym lifting weights or using weights. 30 pounds after that first week. All right. 30 pounds might be easy, too easy. I need to build. I need to bump it up to maybe 50 or 60 pounds at this point, because at this point you are building muscle memory. It's the same thing with fasting. You got to kick it up a notch. You got to build up that spiritual stamina. It's the same exact way. It's like lifting weights. It is building your spiritual stamina. And it's also building your faith. It's building your spiritual gifts. It's going to stir up those spiritual gifts in you. Amen. So um, that's the second thing. Again, if you start after three days after that and it gets to be too much, then you can um, bump it up to six o'clock. Bump it up to seven o'clock, bump it up to nine o'clock, whatever works for you. If you feel like even if you go the whole day and, and without eating and it's getting to be too easy, then at that point, you know, you're ready for the big lead. You can now go on a dry fast. You can go on a dry fast. That means that you won't have any food or any water. Or what you can do is you can drink water all day long with no food. Because actually that's that's going into the big lead. But dry fasting is actually you really turning up some things in the spiritual realm. You are really gaining spiritual power when you do that. So there are some things that's being broken off of you, broken off of your generation, children, your legacy that is to come after you. When you begin to do, when you do a dry fast, you will begin to, to experience. You may even have heaven encounters, um, spiritual encounters with angels it's a lot of different things that will begin to uh, the doors will be open up for you when you begin to do a dry fast amen so those are just some things that you can do the basic things that you can do to start your fast again don't tell anybody about your fast unless it is to edify others in the mighty name of jesus so i hope that this video touches you in a way to where you can have a new understanding of praying and fasting so that you can have a new understanding of what God wants and what he has for you, what he wants to reveal to you, what revelation he wants to, re what, what revelation can be revealed to you from the spirit of the Lord. It's not just certain people. If everybody operate in this, you can access the kingdom of God. But first and foremost, you must believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and that he is your Lord and Savior. You cannot access it without that. Amen. All right. So I love y'all. Jesus love y'all and y'all be blessed.